This band, for a while, took every single gig that we were offered. We played every party, every rooftop party, every fraternity. Um, we never said no. We just played everything. Sometimes we played, I think we, the most we played three gigs in one day, and each one of those were about two and a half hours long. Um, and so we just, we just worked ourselves silly for four years. And then things started growing. We got on the Horde tour. Um, plus, you know, what's funny is back when we started, uh, taping was huge. And so we let people tape our shows. And those tapes started getting everywhere. And so when, after about four years, we decided, well, we should probably release a, a, a professional sounding live album um, for our first record. And we did. And we threw a few, um, a few studio uh, numbers on there, but it was mostly just a live show, and it people ate it up because all they had of us were these like kind of crappy sounding like mixtapes. Um, and so finally, there was a representation of what we were and who what we did, and uh, it just really grew from there. And it was a steady increase. And then after our first studio record, it really sort of we sort of sling Paul uh, uh, shot up to. Uh, you know, some sort of success. But along the, with those lines, the other thing is our business model was a lot different than, uh, than most bands at that time. Most bands, the record company comes to them, they're, they're struggling just to play and keep afloat, and the record company comes and says, we like you guys, we think we can make something out of you, here's X amount of dollars up front, and when you're done, we'll give you X amount more, and then you know we'll send, we'll give you this amount for a tour, and we'll do the merchandise. And and what people don't, what the bands didn't realize is that the record company was going like this, but then they were like, they're like, but once you're you're theirs, then everything went through record companies, like the merchandise and the booking and the touring and and everything, and they were pretty much in control of the full aspect. Well, we had such a machine already happening by the time the record companies even got hip to what was happening or who we were, that they were coming out going, well, what do we do? Like, what do we do with this band? They're already, they're already kind of doing it, and, uh, and it was, RCA was the first company that came out and actually saw what we did and said this is great they do their they have their touring down they have their uh, merch down all we have to do is help them make a great studio record and and they signed us with that sort of freedom we had a lot of freedom from the start and we've only been given more and more freedom throughout the years so it's helped us not not have to repay so much it's really helped us just look at look at the future and move forward and I mean our birch company now is is pretty large I believe and uh, and so that's that's one way but thinking about you know we just did Europe and and we played in places that were about 3,500 people and they were packed and it was awesome but I loved it because it felt like back in mid 90s when you that initial uh, you know, when everyone just sort of gets the buzz about about you and when you're playing to a packed house, but most of them haven't really seen you before, but they're there because their friends said you have to come see this band. And it was like that in Europe. And um, so, you know, even though we're huge here in Europe, we're still in the 90s, kind of. And so going over there, it's been a lot of fun. And now with with uh, all the social sites, YouTube and everything, it's, it's pretty easy to uh, spread it, you know, get your music out there. We were incorporated as a band, um, which was another thing that a lot of bands did not do. A lot of bands, the lead singer kind of owned the whole thing, or whoever, the guitar player and lead singer, but generally it was a, there was a split. But we really, we came together, we said, well, we're, we're all incorporated. And um, the merchandise thing just sort of, sort of, we just made t-shirts one day and just started selling the t-shirts and people loved them, so we just kept doing that. Um, Korn came around because he ran a club that we played at. And we started getting more and more, uh, we started playing there every Tuesday and, and he became pretty interested in what we were doing and he saw that there was already momentum. So when he came into it, there was already a momentum, but he definitely helped sculpt a lot of the more business models uh, of, of that we used um, throughout our career and the way he dealt with the record companies and, um, and, uh, and all that was, you know, he, he's, he's a pretty powerful um, for us when it comes to the business side of the music.